Honda CRV SUVs and Honda Civic cars with high oil levels are waiting to be fixed in China as Honda tries to respond to a growing chorus of owner complaints about overwhelming fuel odors in the vehicles. Based on customer complaints, the high oil levels and fuel smells have hit Honda customers hardest in the northern areas of China where low temperatures are common. Dongfeng Honda, a Chinese car company half owned by Honda, originally announced in February a recall of about 350,000 Honda CRV SUVs and Honda Civics. The vehicles are equipped with 1.5-liter turbocharged Earth Dreams direct injection engines that, according to Honda, have oil levels too high due to short drives in cold weather. The automaker says the cold climate and short trips cause condensation and excess fuel vapors if the engines don't have time to reach temperatures that would normally burn off the contaminants. Honda says excess fuel builds up and stays in the oil pan where it would normally evaporate and recycle through the combustion chamber of the engine. In addition to the high oil levels and fuel smells, customers report illuminated engine warning lights, but Honda says the problems won't cause engine damage and there haven't been any reports of crashes. Dongfeng Honda told Beijing Media that experts from the Honda Technology Research Institute conducted lab tests and real-world driving tests in northern China and allegedly determined the high oil levels don't cause abnormal engine wear. The high oil levels also allegedly won't cause any performance issues with the CRVs and Civics, and although numerous customers complain about high oil levels and gas odors, no customer has alleged engine damage. Investigators further determined the engine warning light will activate when the oil level hits 21 mm above the limit of the dipstick. Honda and Dongfeng plan on resolving the problems by updating the gasoline injection control software, adjusting the ignition timing and speed of the engines and updating the fuel injection timing to effectively burn off excess fuel. Additionally, the automaker planned on extending the warranty to six years, but Chinese officials put the kibosh on the plans, at least concerning the CRVS. Chinese regulators say Honda needs to come up with better recall plans for the CRV SUVs and will likely need to do the same for the Civics. This means Honda cannot sell CRVs in the country until officials approve new recall repairs. Honda recommends limiting extended idling periods, using a block heater and driving the vehicle in a lower gear to cause the engine to warm up faster. The automaker says longer trips at higher engine revolutions will help the excess fuel and vapors to properly evaporate. While Honda stays busy responding to Chinese customers about the CRVS, the automaker has experienced its own problems in the US concerning gas smells in the SUVs. A class action lawsuit filed in 2016 alleges model year 2016 Honda CRVS have problems with fuel odors in the cabins and a separate lawsuit alleges 2015 to 2017 CRV SUVs have defects that cause fuel odor problems within a year of owning the SUVs. The numbers behind Tesla Incorporated's long-distance semi-electric trucks are close to making sense for haulers looking at a shift away from diesel that may save them tens of thousands of dollars a year, according to an executive with DHL. Jim Monkmeyer, president, transportation at DHL Supply Chain, was among the first to order the truck Silicon Valley billionaire Elon Musk's company is expected to begin churning out in 2019. He says the 10 trucks ordered are a test run and that he is still years away from switching the majority of his fleet of trucks to electric. But he is taking heed of a major shift away from diesel and the money it could save DHL. He says he could potentially pay off the difference between the purchase price of a Tesla semi and a traditional diesel truck in less than two years, thanks to savings on maintenance and fuel. Monkmeyer told Reuters in an interview from his office in Columbus, Ohio, we are estimating that we could have payback within a year and a half based on energy usage as well as lower maintenance cost. The maintenance savings can be enormous as well. Just because the engines are much simpler in terms of the number of parts and the complexities of the parts. 
The payback benefit is one of the keys to the success of the new generation of electric trucks and DHL, a unit of Germany's Deutsche Post, has a history in the area, having already introduced 5,000 of its own electric scooter vans for local deliveries. The two-year timeline also chimes with assurances being given by Daimler AG's van unit to customers interested in its forthcoming electric sprinter van that the total cost of ownership will be the same as the cost to own and operate a conventional van over a few years. Monkmeyer says he does not expect to buy just Tesla electric trucks, but the in-depth discussions on price and feasibility that DHL is running on the trucks are in line with several small and large international haulers who spoke to Reuters. A truck runs around 65,000 to 100,000 miles a year, and Tesla has promised a 20% saving on the per-mile operating costs truckers pay now, estimating its new semi will cost $1.26 per mile compared to what it says are industry standards of around $1.51 for diesel trucks. Analysts, however, say the figures continue to evolve. The $1.51 cost assumes prices for diesel fuel and that fuel economy costs remain static. They also say fuel efficiency for diesel trucks is expected to advance further, with a compounding improvement in the high single digits by 2020, potentially limiting the cost savings advantage suggested by Tesla. Jeffrey's analyst Stephen Volkman said, the problem is Tesla are aiming at a moving target, and even with that the electric, trucks, would be lower cost, in terms of operation, but it wouldn't be quite as big a difference. Monkmeyer says the company is still mapping out costs, but believes the two trucks already look like they will be close enough to make the switch feasible. Still, he says larger concerns loom around Tesla's charging infrastructure and how haulers plan to switch from pumps in depots to swift mega-charging of electric vehicles. He says, the biggest issue is going to be how is that grid provided and how is it supported and how quickly can we get a network out there for use nationwide, throughout North America, throughout the world. That's a big question mark. So that to me would be one limiting factor. Executives at General Motors are clearly excited about the potential for their all-new full-size pickups the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra. Both are set to go into production late this year, and GM expects both to bring home more profits per truck than the current Silverado and Sierra. But GM's chief financial officer, Chuck Stevens, recently made clear that the road from here to those fat profits would be a bumpy one, because putting these new pickups into production won't be simple. While GM won't begin production of the new trucks until the fourth quarter of 2018, it has already begun making the extensive changes to its factories that will be required to build them. GM is clearly hoping to learn from our rival Ford Motor Company's experience. The launch of Ford's all-new 2015 F-150 followed months of fevered work. That new F-150 had aluminum body panels instead of the steel panels of its predecessor meaning that it required very different tooling and processes to build. Ford had to essentially gut and rebuild two of its busiest factories at a moment when pickup demand was booming. Ford pulled it off, but not without a cost. The company warned beforehand that it would lose about 90,000 units of production. It had built up inventories of 2014 model year pickups before beginning the factory conversions, but still, Ford's pickup sales lagged for several months while it worked to get the factories up and running again. Helped by a very strong market, the new F-150 helped carry Ford to record profits in 2015 and 2016. But here in 2018, the US new car market is looking a little ragged, and so GM has come up with a plan that it hopes will improve somewhat on Ford's experience. GM's new trucks don't have all aluminum body panels. But as Stevens explained during GM's earnings call this week, the new trucks really are all new, completely different from the current models. That means GM has to make extensive, and expensive, 
changes to major sections of its truck factories that assemble the truck's bodies and chassis. Those changes have already begun, and they're already having an impact. Stevens said that investors should expect a 60,000-unit decline in GM shipments in North America in the first quarter, largely due to downtime at GM's pickup factories. That's a big hit. To put it in perspective, while GM doesn't release exact production figures for every model, we know that it sold about 178,000 Silverados and Sierras combined in the US in the first three months of 2017. GM is losing production equivalent to a third of its full-size pickup sales in the first quarter of last year. Given the profitability of these trucks, that's a heavy hit. How GM will keep that number from getting worse? In total, Stevens said, GM expects to lose about 120,000 units of production in 2018 due to factory changes needed to make the all-new trucks. But there's a twist, GM has a complicated plan to boost production of its current trucks while some of its factories are retooled. In a nutshell, GM's Fort Wayne assembly plant, in Roanoke, Indiana, will send partially assembled trucks and parts to its highly flexible Oshawa assembly plant, in Ontario, which will paint and finish the trucks. If that sounds a little bit Rube Goldberg, well, it is. It's a hack, one that GM has nicknamed the Oshawa Shuttle. They hope the shuttle will allow them get about 60,000 extra 2018 model pickups built this year. If it works, it will leave GM with a production decline of about 60,000. That's not ideal, but it beats the 90,000 trucks that Ford lost in 2014 and 2015. More importantly, while GM will probably take a hit to its first quarter results, it should be able to make up some of the lost profit by year-end.